Hello, my name is Adam. Today we'll be going over some maintenance techniques for the equipment of Seabird Electronics. We will now be talking about O-ring replacement. For this we'll be using a SBE37 microcant, but the principles are going to be applying to all Seabird instruments when O-rings are replaced. The first thing you want to do when replacing O-rings is to remove the old O-rings. You want to use a wooden or plastic tool for this so you don't damage the O-ring seating surface if you were to use a, a metal tool, a screwdriver, or tweezers. So the plastic allows you to remove them without damaging the, the housing. Once you have removed the old O-rings, it's best to dispose of them so you don't mix them up with the newer O-rings. You then want to inspect the O-ring seating surface for any notches or corrosion or other damage. You also want to check inside the housing of the instrument for any damage where the O-ring is going to sit. You will clean the O-ring surface with a lint-free uh, chem wipe or equivalent. And you're using one of these because it prevents lint from being left behind on the O-ring surface. So you'll do that to both the end cap portion and to the interior of the instrument. When you have the correct size O-ring, it's important to inspect them for any imperfections or flaws that may uh, hinder the, the sealing that they make. So you'll feel for any sort of bumps or grooves or anything on the O-ring by moving them through your fingers. And you will apply a small amount of Parker Super Olu. Parker is the company that makes the O-rings and so we use their recommended uh, brand of lubricant for the O-rings. So you will apply a small amount to the O-ring and then smooth it out, creating a thin, even film around the O-ring with your fingers, which also allows you to uh, feel for any imperfections in, in the O-ring. And then you will install the O-ring on the end cap. And it's also good to apply a small amount of the Parker Super O-Lube to the interior of the instrument to prevent the O-ring from binding when it's put into place. And again, you just need a small amount to create an even film. Too much O-ring lubrication can have an adverse effect by creating a buildup of residue along the O-ring, which will then uh, weaken the seal and possibly allow water to bridge through the seal and flood the instrument. The last thing you wanna do, of course, is to make sure you are making the Molex connection to the battery compartment. and then evenly close the end cap and reinstall the hardware. We'll now talk a little bit about the cables and connectors for Seabird instruments. Some of the problems that can occur are when connectors go bad. Uh, connectors can go bad for various reasons. Here are a couple of examples of corrosion, uh, more corrosion and some broken pins. There are some ways you can help prevent such occurrences. And one of the important ways is just to make sure you're installing the cables or dummy plugs uh, correctly on the CTD. So to do that, you will take your dummy plug and apply a small amount of DC4 which is a silicon-based 
uh, lubricant that can be used on connectors and cables. You want to use this rather than a petroleum based product since the petroleum can eat away at the rubber on the o-ring or uh, connector. So you'll apply a small amount to the inside of the dummy plug or a cable end. You can also apply a small amount to the ridge of the connector itself. And then you will align the dots on the dummy plug to the large pin on the connector. Once you have the connection made, you want to slide your fingers down the end of the connector to expel any air that may be trapped in the dummy plug. Uh, should air become trapped in there, once the system goes into the water, water pressure can then force the connector off. You'll then apply the locking sleeve to the dummy plug and tighten it on there. This doesn't need to be very tight since it isn't increasing the watertight integrity of the seal. It's just protecting the connector. If you over tighten this too much, then it will bulge out at the bottom. And then when you go to unscrew it, there's a chance that it can unscrew the actual connector itself. So it just needs to be finger tight on there. And this is going to apply to cables and dummy plugs as well. When using cables with a Seabird instrument, you want to make sure you have a secure connection, whether it's for just a data connection or for going subsurface. When making the connection, you first want to inspect the connector itself for any signs of damage or corrosion. And a good way to get a closer look is to clean off any residue on the connector using a lint-free uh, chem wipe or equivalent product, which is going to not leave any fibers residue behind when you clean the connector. When you wipe off the connector, it's going to afford you a better chance to inspect the pins for any signs of corrosion. And once you've verified that it's clean and corrosion free, you can make a connection with the cable. You also want to inspect the cable for any signs of damage or corrosion or cracking around the boot end. You can apply a small amount of DC4 electrical insulating compound to the cable that will help it uh, go onto the connector easier. You need a small amount inside the boot end of the cable and you want to avoid using any petroleum based product since that can erode or degrade the material of the, the cable and connector. You'll align the large pin on the connector with the bumps on the cable. Make the connection and allow the air to escape so that water does not force the cable off. Thanks for watching our videos. If you have additional questions, you can find more documentation on our website or call or email us at seabird at seabird.com.